hello everybody, welcome to this uh, webinar. Thank you very much for coming. My name is Abigail and I want to thank you on behalf of the ICC team for assisting to this webinar. Today we will join Joao Luis Cortez, an international coach and ICC trainer with a very vast international experience. So let me introduce you to Joao. Joao, can you hear us properly? Yes, thank you Abigail and welcome to everybody. It's very good to be here and to I thank ICC for the invitation for this webinar and it's also very good to have you in the audience. I hope that the during the next 75 minutes we can present something and also not only present but also exchange ideas with you and receive your questions and in the end that you have the feeling that it was worth to take part in this webinar about executive coaching. Okay? But uh, before we start, there is some instructions, some information that I believe that will help you following and profiting this webinar the most. <clears throat> we have on the right side of your screen, sorry, okay, an area, it's a kind of menu when you can send questions, it's in this chat area, you can type the questions and Abigail who is supporting us in this webinar will read the questions and send the questions to me. You can send the questions at any time and uh, uh, we will <clears throat> answer the questions or even comment the questions. Uh, you can also put some comments or opinions, idea that will contribute for this webinar to be richer. Uh, the idea of the webinar, it's not only me uh, talking, talking for more than one hour, but also receiving your participation and exchange ideas. One of the best way for everybody to learn. Okay, um, There is another area that there is uh, in the upper left side of the menu where there is a hand. If you put a question or you want to present a comment, please click on the hand that it's the same of raising your hand. Then uh, at the proper moment Abigail will also open your audio and then we will be able to listen to you. We only ask you to pay attention of the sound of your ambience because when we open your mic, your audio, it will be possible to hear everything that is close to you. Okay, so if there are other people at your ambience or uh, equipment like uh, audio uh, system, music, babies, dogs, cats, whatever, uh, that can cause some noise. Okay, please uh, pay attention to that, otherwise everybody will listen to it. Okay? We recommend that you stay in the full screen mode okay? and uh, if there is many noises at your ambience when you are talk, uh, mute your microphone for a moment to reestablish the sound. Okay? Uh, if there is any other question, please put it in the chat area that Abigail will happily, will be glad to answer your questions. And let's start. And first of all, you know that webinar is a very interesting uh, tool. We can talk. I am at the present moment in Brazil. There are many people in many places of the uh, world and we can talk, we can exchange ideas with this tool. On the other hand, it's a tool that I cannot uh, look at you, so I can uh, not know who you are based on your expressions, and I don't have uh, an idea who I'm talking to. To help me to be uh, the closest possible to you, I would like to know you a bit at the beginning of this webinar. and. For this, I will put two questions. Question number one is, do you work as an executive coach or T 
did you work as an executive coach in one moment of your life? And there will be three possible answers. Answer number one is no. I have never worked as an executive coach. Question number two, uh, sorry, answer number two is yes. And I have up to 100 hours of experience at executive coaching. Not coaching, but specifically executive coaching. And answer number three is yes. And I've got more than 100 hours of experience. Abigail, I'll give the word to you now to put the place for the people to vote. Okay, and we have launched the poll. So now you can see you have the three options in the panel on your right. Okay, the possible answers appear, they are on your screen, and we are looking forward to your answers. Great, so we have a 69% saying no, a 21% saying yes, up to 100% hours of experience and an 11% saying yes, more than 100, uh, 100 hours of experience. Okay, thank you Abigail very much and thank you for you to, to send us uh, your answer. So most of the people here has never ever worked as an executive coach, okay? This is important for me to have an idea. Okay, question number to, oh, okay, now it appears the answers, okay, in pink, no, in green, less than 100 experience, and in blue, more than 100 hours of experience. Okay, the second question is, have you been in an executive coaching train? Okay, so have you ever taken part in a training about executive coaching in a uh, certification program about executive coaching and three possible answers are no I have never been answer number two yes up to three day trainings or three days of training and question uh, sorry answer number three is yes more than three days of formal executive coaching training, okay? The screen is again with the answers and we are waiting for them. Abigail, again with you. Okay, so 70, now 80% of our attendees have voted. We're waiting on the remaining. So just remember you need to click on the screen what your answer would be. These are very interesting results, Joao. Sorry, Abigail, can you repeat are, what you said? These are very interesting results. Okay, yeah, I'm curious. Okay, so the poll is closed. And these are the results. So 55% said no. 16% said yes, up to three days of training, and 29% said yes, more than three days of training. Okay, this is very good. Thanks again, Abigail, and you who sent your answer. And it's interesting because um, there are people, 
at least it shows that there are people who attended two programs but hasn't had an experience in executive coaching yet. Great. Our agenda for today or for uh, this next uh, one hour program is we are uh, we will start talking about executive coaching and uh, what we consider executive coaching is our mm, definition about it item number two is why why executive coaching why an executive would uh, attend to an executive coaching program a such busy man or woman uh, would invest time in an executive coaching program. Three, the benefits of executive coaching. And they are interesting here. It's the selling point of the program. And you can use it for your business, okay? Four is the executive coaching survey. I'm writing a book on the subject. And I have interviewed people about executive coaching, the executives uh, and the questions that I have put are what are the main challenges you face in your position? And question number two is how or why executive coaching, in your opinion, can help you? There are many other questions during this survey. Normally, it's one hour interview with the executives, but the essence of the survey, the interview, is based on these two questions. Okay? I have also talked to co executive coaches, so not only with the executives, but their coaches to, to have their opinion. And it's interesting because the opinions change when you talk to the executive and when you talk to the coaches. At least there are different points of view. Okay? And maybe we are talking here about some blind spots. That And blind spot is a concept very uh, much related to coaching. Okay? And finally, I have also talked to HR people and people who work with the executives, people from other departments. So I will present some material here in the fourth part of this webinar. And finally, part five, quest. But again, you can put you don't need to wait these previous four parts of the webinar to put a question or your comment. You can do it at any way even now. Okay, when you have a question, please uh, type it in the chat area. Okay, and I hope that the experience that I have as a trainer, as a coach, executive coach, as even as a, a leader, I worked for 20 years as a leader at companies, okay, uh, help this webinar with information and um, good examples during this one hour. Okay, uh, so to start, what is an executive coaching? Okay, for us, and it's very simple. An executive coaching is a coaching where the coachee, the client of the process, the, the person who will be with the coach, is an executive. Okay? An executive is, we consider here an executive every time we, we use this word here during this webinar, we mean that it's a leader at the top level of the organization or the division or department. So it's the top leader 
or the number one of the division of the department that we are talking about that who is the coach of this executive coaching so we can be talking about a, pres a president a vice president a CEO a CFO a director a head of the department so many kinds of departments okay sometimes managers of a division of the department a member of a board of directors so all these people can be coaches of an executive coaching okay and what represents that it's a very specific process because of the features of this position and the challenges that they face. And this is our next point. Okay, why? What are the specific situations, concerns, uh, points, questions of an executive that are related to coaching? Oh. <clears throat> What is, in your opinion, if you were someone who would be interviewed by me for my interview, for my book, which would be the answer that you would give to this question? Why executive coaching? What are the main challenges of an executive? How executive coaching can help an executive? Which answer or which answers would you give to me? Okay, we, we don't have a pool here because I suppose that there are so many answers or at least possible answers I would say infinite possibilities that we wouldn't have space for that in the webinar area pool area okay but first of all not the most important but it's a very important issue is that executives having a demanding and stressful job uh, I don't know if you who listen to me now have ever had the opportunity to be an executive or to work in this position, it's indeed in many cases or most of the cases extremely stressful, extremely demanding. Depending on the market segment that an executive works, it's more demanding and more stressful. Executives are under great pressure to perform and this can make the situation worse and worse. There are people who under pressure gives their best. But I am sure that you also know people who under pressure gives their worst. And pressure is a totally related to the executive job. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine an executive that under pressure is not able to give his or her best? In your opinion, what does this represent to the company? An executive that is not able to do his or her best because he is under pressure. What are the consequences, in your opinion? What are the consequences this month? What are the consequences to the end of the year? For the next two years? Not to say longer than that an executive who is not able to give his best 
during the next five years, how would this affect the company? Mm -hmm. Are we talking about dollars, hundreds of dollars, thousands, millions, billions of dollars? What is at the stake can be very high. Another important point is that such an important person who can represent millions or billions of dollars, when is hired from outside the company, is more expensive then when is hired from inside the company. So it's very interesting to have a program to develop people at the company. The leaders and the people who work with the leaders. And there are many advantages when you can hire or when you can put in the main position of a company a division, a department, someone that is already working for the company. I don't mean that hiring someone from outside the company is bad, necessarily bad. What I mean is that companies can profit in many ways when they have the capacity to develop their own people and these people can take over the higher positions of the company. Another interesting point and I don't know if some of you gave this answer or would give this answer to my survey is that it's not easy to get an unbiased information inside the company. Normally, uh, people don't say the truth either because they are afraid of or because they don't uh, are interested in saying the truth to the executives. When you have a coach or uh, an executive coaching, it's a very good opportunity to the executive to receive or to be in contact with an intelligent outside perspective. And all of this, all these situations is stressful uh, with, uh, without an unbiased information, stressful, poor performance. In a world full of changes, changes that are faster and faster, I know that you know that. Customers change, employees change, suppliers change, the owners of the company with so many mergers, fusions, acquisitions change, stakeholders change, and many times these changes represent changing almost everything. If we start talking about customers, they are more and more demanding. I don't know how old are you. Depending on how old are you, you will remember of a time when customers are much less demanding. Depending on the segments that you were depending on the segments that you work at. <clears throat> there were situations in the past when we had a surplus of customers and the lack of products or services. Nowadays it seems that it is exactly the contrary and we need to enchant to fight for the customers and they are more and more demand and this is great because when we are customers and we indeed are also customers it's very good we have better products better services a better world 
So this contributes to our development as nations, as regions, as communities. Okay? But on the other hand, it represents a challenging situation for the leaders, for the executives. Don't you agree with that? Does this make sense to you? To continue talking about why executive coaching, okay, leaders during their careers change the responsibilities. They are promoted. They grow in the company. What represent changing what they do? At the beginning, normally, they are leaders of themselves. They are executives of themselves. And they are the sole responsible for the outcome they reach, for what they give to the company. And if they are good at what they do, they are promoted. And probably, they will be leaders of other people. And if they continue being good, they will be lead, promoted again and will be leaders of other leaders until they reach the top of the organization. Each time they are promoted this way vertically represents that they will have to change what they do. It represents that they will have to change how they structure their time. It will represent sometimes that they will have to change their beliefs. Ooh. This was very well described by Han Sharan in a book, The Leader, The Pipeline Leadership. Many times leaders or people who are when are promoted have serious problems concerning all these changes. They don't know how to structure their time. They don't know many times what is the most important aspects of the new position. And there is a big wish to continue doing what he used it to do because he was best or he is still very very good the best one at what he used to do or at what he was supposed to do but now it's different new activities new responsibilities what represents dealing with what the executive is not as good as he used to be as with the other, the previous activities, the previous job. Coaching can help a lot in all these situations. When you have a support from someone, someone who is prepared to help you with the situations, to help the leader with the situation, is totally different. You are not alone and longer. Another important point is that there are many invitations at companies for the executives to lose control. Do you know why you do everything you do? Or there are things that you do that you don't know why you did what you did. Have you ever asked to yourself, oh gosh, I don't believe that I did this again. I don't know why I repeat this. Have you ever asked your this question? If the answer was yes, I can tell you you are normal. Welcome to the human being club. 
this is with all of us. Many times we don't know why we do what we do. Many times we don't know why we feel what we feel. We think what we think. This is our unconscious part of our being. And leaders, executives, are people. The same happens to them. They are normal people like us. Coaching helps them to understand themselves better. To understand other people who work with them better. When you understand yourself better and others better, the relationships with yourself and with others improve a lot. And when the relationships with yourself and others improve, it's a huge benefit from you, from the leader, and from the company. When I say you, I mean you as a leader, you as an executive. Emotional factors are the most difficult to deal with. And one important cause, cause for companies not achieve the outcomes they want and they need. So far, so good. How has it been until now this webinar for you? Abigail. Yes, wow. Are you there? Can you listen? Okay. Do you do we have questions or comments? We have some comments. We have people agree with what you say. And um, people are saying that Anik, for instance, is saying that it's fine. Beatriz Kelly Serratos is saying that so far it's been very enlightening. Uh, can you speak louder, Abigail? I have some problems with the sound that uh, reaches yeah. me. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, much better. <laughs> you got great. Uh, I would say that I can hear you now. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so Beatriz Kelly Serrato is saying that this is enlightening. Roberto Munita is saying that this is very interesting matter. So they are following you. We I don't see any questions. Okay. So being. thank you, Roberto and Beatriz. And thanks, Abigail. I can listen to you now. I, I know that we are thousands of miles away, <laughs> one from another. Yes, we are. Okay, but now your voice uh, reaches me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Okay, so if there is no questions or other comments, we can go ahead and uh, talk a bit about the, after talking uh, why executive coaching, start talking about the benefits of executive coachings, uh, coaching. And my question to you is, uh, and I will give you one minute, one minute to think about that. What is, in your opinion, the benefits of coaching? What am I going to tell you? Okay, one minute for you to think, to consider this question. Your answers are welcome, if you want. We have so many answers, Joao. Should I share with you? <laughs> now, now, Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, uh, tell, tell us some of them, Abigail. Yes. Uh, Aniel is saying, calmness which generates e effectiveness. Okay. Okay. La 
Lars Erik Lundqvist is saying, discover my hidden capabilities as a leader. Okay, thanks Lars. It's good to have you here listening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What else more? We have Nina Buru saying, brings improvement in organization. Okay, bringing improvement in organizations. Great. Okay. Yes. Maria Figueiredo says, sure, make me more aware. Okay, make me more aware of my competencies. And okay. make me know the difference. My... Yes, and make me know the difference that makes the difference. Okay, and it's important to know the difference that makes the difference. Great. Great, very good. Beatrice, Two more, Abigail. Good. Beatrice is saying, yeah, leading by example and to be present for the exhibit. Sorry, uh, I had a problem with the sound and couldn't listen to you. Can you repeat, please? Yes. Beatrice says, leading by example and be present for the executive. Okay, leading by example, okay, and be present. And we will see how important this uh, aspect of presence is for the executives mm -hmm. and coaches too. Okay, the last one. Rita from Brazil says, to support oh. the organization's changes and obstacles. Oh, and obstacles, <laughs> that's it. Okay, to support organization change and obstacles. Okay, yes. great. We are close. Hit. I don't know where in Brazil you are, but at least we are in the same country. Okay, huge <laughs> country. But oh, she's okay. in Bahia. I'm in Bahia. Okay, I envy you, Rita. Okay, <laughs> good. <clears throat> I am in this the coast too, but not in Bahia. Very good. <clears throat> Okay, and thanks for you, Abigail. We okay. will have more questions, and uh, uh, I know that you love talking. You will have the opportunity <laughs> to uh, talk more, okay? Thank you so much, Rob. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so uh, we, we have... Uh, many, many answers uh, that we couldn't uh, read and uh, I know that there would be much more answers, okay? And what shows how important executive coaching is and how it can make the difference. Uh, as one of you said, the difference that makes the difference. Okay? So, other benefits of executive coaching. The first one that I will say is having someone to share. Executives are in a lonely position. The higher an executive goes, considering a company, he will be more and more alone. Okay. Most of the cases, or in considering a lot of situations, he is totally alone. I am almost sure that most of you know an executive that has nobody in the company, inside the company, to share some concerns, some decisions, some uh, ideas. And it's very important to have someone outside someone with whom you can share all of this. Talking to the executives that I have talked, this is a very common, not to say unanimous, position, uh, situation that they describe. And most of the executives have someone they talk to, not necessarily a coach, can be people of the family, can be coaches, can be a priest, can be a psychologist, can be a consultant. Okay? And as most of you know what coach is, now you can imagine the opportunity for coach considering this situation. How coaching 
can be helpful because coaching is different from someone of the family. A coach is different from a priest, a psychologist. And again, I don't mean that they are not important or that they cannot help. Of course they can. But what I mean is that we coaches can help in a very specific way. And we will talk a bit about this too. Many executives would burn out without the support of an executive coach. Okay. The second benefit, in my opinion, of executive coaching is that the executives will have someone who will ask the challenging, the tough questions that people at the company or most of the people, I wouldn't say everybody, but most of the people don't put, don't ask. Mm -hmm. In other words, the executive will have someone who will challenge them. Wow, it's interesting. Someone who will help them to look at the blind spots. And it's amazing because um, we could have a tendency to think that an executive, a president of a company, a CEO of a company is someone who can notice everything, otherwise he wouldn't be where he is. And again, all of these guys, all of the women that are at these positions are normal human beings with their limited capacity to notice what is going on close to them many times. They are very, very good at what they do. They are very, very good at the technical stuff. Some of them at knowing people. But this doesn't mean that they are very good at everything. That they are very good at everything that is necessary for a good performance. That everything that is necessary for them to be the best they can be. And the coach, the executive coach, will put some questions or the challenge questions that will help them to be the best they can be. And much more because a coach is not only someone who knows good questions. It's much more than that. And you know that. And as the coaching helps the executive to be a better leader, it means that it will help the executive to motivate, to inspire their people to perform better. And better people, people who can grow in the company, who has an executive that helps them with that, helps them to develop represent a stronger company, a stronger company where solutions and the good ideas don't depend on only a small group of people, not to say only on one person, but on many people. Nowadays it's very difficult, not to say impossible, to compete in the market, have only a a small group of smart people taking all the decisions and having all the ideas. You will not be able to attract, to have the better talents, the better people in your company if you don't allow them to grow and to participate. So a leader, an executive who wants to create 
the best group of people he can create and have this group of talents with him needs to create an ambience with opportunity for everybody. An ambience where people grow. What means invest a great part of his or her time developing people. I remember some times ago when uh, I started the leadership programs here in Brazil, we used to ask people what your company expects from you. And the answer of most of the people was reach the goals. Nowadays we continue asking the same question, but the answer has changed. The answer now is reach the goals again and develop people. Coaching can help a lot the executive in this task because the first person that he will develop is himself and he will be an example. It represents a commitment for the executive as a leader. Do you know what makes a good leader, a great leader, in your opinion? Why a great leader is considered great? What's your answer? You can put in the chat area. Abigail? Yes. Do we have answers? Yes. Mary Amy. Why a great leader is considered great? Okay. Mary Go ahead, Amy please. Sorry. Says, it's all right. Uh, Mary Amy says balance in life, leadership, and influence. Okay. Uh, an interesting word, influence. Mm -hmm. What else more? Monica says a great leader can lead himself. Leads himself, okay. Mm -hmm. mm, Lars Eric says, ability to motivate co workers. Ability to motivate co workers. Mm -hmm. Dorota says, building Good. strategy, achieving goals, and inspiring others to do so. Okay, okay. A similar answer from those I have heard these times during the, uh, <clears throat> the training programs here, okay? Alvaro says, a great leader is followed by conviction and not by authority. Okay, conviction, not authority. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Abigail. Thank you, very welcome. And thank for all of you who sent the, these comments and answers. And that's it. Good leaders, great leaders inspire people. Okay. That's it. Good leaders are able to develop other leaders. Think about one leader, a great leader, probably. He inspired people. And you, if you look at him or her closer, you will notice how many leaders today had him in the past as his or her leader. So he developed the new leaders. I think that we already started talking about with executive coaching. The executive will perform better 
he or her will delegate more and will concentrate on the more important issues that need his or her attention. All other aspects, having someone to share, someone who asks challenging questions, etc., 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 will help you to be a to a better perform. Okay, so these are some of the benefits of executive coaching. Someone close to the executive that will help him with all of this. So far so good. Well, as I didn't hear any answer, I will continue. Yes. And yes, with the fourth part of our webinar, that is the executive coaching survey. Abigail, do you want to say something? Yes, yes, we are, everything is okay, and uh, Marcelo and Ruiz say, yes, it has been great, and thank you very much. Okay, thanks for your presence, Marcelo. Right. Okay. Okay, uh, and now let's talk a bit uh, in the last 10-15 uh, minutes that we, we have about the executive coaching survey, okay? <clears throat> Uh, I will present the main topics that have appeared until now in the survey to discuss, to present and discuss with you, exchange these ideas. I don't mean that these are the most important topics of executive coaching. What I mean is that these are the topics that appear in the survey. It's important also to say that it's not a local survey, so I have interviewed people from Brazil, from Mexico, from the United States, Canada, Portugal, Spain, England. So it's a broader survey, not than a local survey, okay? And it's interesting how some points are exactly the same, despite the place I was asking the questions, okay? So, the first thing that appear is that uh, what is the main challenge, remembering the questions, what is the main challenge of an executive and how executive coaching can help a leader, an executive, and the first one that appear is to have the right information. Wow! <clears throat> what does this mean? It means, as I said, that people don't tell the executives or don't say to the executives the truth. Uh, and this doesn't mean that they are liars. It's not that. But it means that they are most of the time afraid. And this depends a lot on the executive style. The way he is, there are many executives that almost, uh, I would say it's a way of saying, um, they don't allow people to be comfortable saying what these people consider it's the truth. Okay. There are other times where people don't say what would be the truth or would be or what they must say to the leaders, to the executives, because they don't want. They are not interested. They believe that this will not be good for them. And so, it's very important for the executive not only to talk to the people who are close to him, and normally that are the people who, who he or she likes the most, but also talk to other people, and normally people who he or she doesn't like. Sometimes these people has, have the best information for him or for her. 
there is a very interesting book. The title is Why Great Leaders Don't Accept an Yes for an Answer, who describes in a very interesting way this kind of situation. The leaders who don't incentive people to say no to them or to say the truth to them, to, to challenge them. And this is a very important thing when you are an executive, to be open for the bad news, to be open to different opinions and to work these bad news, these different opinions. Uh, almost 20 years ago, there was an expedition to the Everest, the highest mount in the planet Earth, 80,848 meters high, where many people died. Uh, in this expedition, there were two of the most famous guides of the region. They were very well respected. They were very well known, very famous. And there was a rule before climbing the mountain, everybody knew this rule, that it was on the last day of the expedition going up, I mean, if any one of the expedition didn't reach the top, the cum of Everest at 2 p.m., he or she must turn around and come back. Doesn't matter how close this person was from the top. 100 meters, 50 meters, 10 meters, he or she must come back. Nobody was allowed to continue climbing up after 2 p.m. on that day. Well, some people of that group reached the top before 2 p.m., but there were others who didn't. Among them, these two very important, very famous, very good guides. Nobody knows why they continue going up even after 2 p.m. Some people of the expedition notice that they were doing that and nobody was able to tell them, hi, you are not supposed to continue going up, it's later than 2 p.m. You are supposed to turn around and start going down. Nobody said that. The consequence of this situation, this inability to say no to the leader, to the executive, five or six people died and others were injured. If you have an executive as a coach, try to help him to notice how much he allows people to say no to him. To say, oh, you are supposed to turn around. Why are you going up? You are supposed to go down. And probably your coaching will help him a lot. Do that with rapport. Otherwise, maybe he, he will say no to you, depend on who he is. Okay? The second issue that appear is have the capacity to share a vision. What we have noticed is that the best executives, they are able 
to see the future and inspire others with this future. As we talked about a couple of minutes ago. So they have the capacity to influence the ambience, the group, the company with a vision. They are able to share this vision. Some of them build up this vision with the group, not alone, but they invite other people of the company in this journey. The journey of a const uh, construction of the vision and after everybody <clears throat> is committed with it. And vision is so important that there is a question that I will put now that can show that is that will the companies be the same five years from now? Are the companies the same they used to be five years ago? As we said at the beginning of this webinar, the world is changing very fast. Who could believe that we would have a Pope from Argentina some years ago? That a man from Mexico, he isn't any longer, but was the richest man of the world, and he's not more. And so many other changes. So an executive coach, uh, sorry, an executive who is able to look into the future and lead the company to this future. will be an outstanding executive. Another point is I have the capacity of understand people. This means having the capacity to know others values and move from I will do other people what I would like others did to me to I will do to other people what they would like I would do to them. The reference is not me, me, me. The reference is others. As a coach, it has been very common for me talking to executives who say, oh, I don't understand this person. We have given to him everything he needs. Everything I would like to have. And he doesn't perform at the level I would like or we need him to perform. An interesting question is what he believes he needs. People are different. Fortunately, people are different. And this is one of the main blind spots that appeared in this survey, is the capacity to understand other. Normally, executives <clears throat> have a tendency to understand others based on their selves. And understand people means deal with emotional factors too, or mainly. Another point that appears is ego. Executives are successful people and they are very good at what they do. Otherwise they wouldn't be where they are. And this is a big invitation to have an ego bigger than what would be good. 
there is an old story, maybe you, you know you know it, about a very wise executive. Okay. Uh, there are variations, okay? So maybe you have heard it in a different context. But I will say here that there was a very wise executive. He was able to keep his balance even when he was faced the most demanding situations, the most stressful situations. And he used to keep his hand into his two pockets. One day, one person close to him decided to ask, Oh, Mr. Executive, how do you do to keep your balance? to have a good performance, to stay calm, even in such stressful ambiences, such stressful situations. And the answer was, well, when my ego is too big and I'm feeling that I am the best, that I am close to God, <clears throat> I put my hand in my right pocket and there is a message there that says, oh, you come from dust, and to dust you will return. On the other hand, when I'm feeling depressed, when I'm feeling blue, small, I put my hand on my left pocket and open the other message that says, you are a special and unique being. You are a creation of God, His image. Coaching can help executives to deal in a proper way with their ego. And this has been appeared. And this point in the survey and uh, many times, but not for the executives. HR, coaches and people who work with the executives have pointed the ego as one of the aspects that coaching can help a lot. And finally, systemic thinking very well described by Peter Sange in his traditional book, The Fifth Discipline. Systemic thinking means having the capacity to see the connections between events. With systemic thinking, the leader can understand the deeper structure of what causes events, what is behind the events, instead of reacting to isolate factors. Systemic thinking helps everybody and the executives to consider the price of decisions and not only look in the short run. I understand that it has been a challenge to think systemically nowadays. Most of the people has been pushed toward short run outcomes. It's very common to see executives that don't have time for strategic, strategic thinking or executives that, to have time, push their people to the operational activities, not allowing them to develop people, not allowing them to strategic thinking and stay alone in the systemic thinking. One example is that many executives have no awareness of the physical price they are paying for work so much or the way they are. How many people are getting sick because they are way working too much? Mm -hmm. 
Well, this is what I had to present to you. I ho hope you have enjoyed it. And we have five more minutes for questions or comments. So now I will be very glad to receive your questions and comments and answer them. If one of your questions or comments, if you don't receive an answer because we, uh, we run out of time, please send them to me. My email will appear in your screen in a couple of seconds. I will be very happy to receive your comments and your questions. Abigail, it is with you. Okay, we have some very interesting questions. Selen is, is asking, how are the tools used in executive coaching different from the ones we use in coaching? Okay, thank you for the question. There are many. I can uh, quote one. Is the, uh, I have one that it's the scenario grid that I have used a lot because uh, executives nowadays have faced the challenge to consider many possibilities of the future. So this is one of the tools I use. Uh, I ask them to pick two the two most important scenarios that as or aspects of the scenario and uh, considering these two possibilities uh, they will consider oh possibility one if it happens and if it doesn't happen possibility two if it happens and if it doesn't happen and mixing all of this you can consider four possibilities scenario one happening and scenario two happening too and so 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 on and this is very interesting because they can create uh, the conditions how they can prepare f or what is common in the four scenarios uh, what are the capacities that are common for the four scenarios uh, what they can do consider what will happen uh, and so and so. This is one tool that is specific for executive coaching. There are other tools if you want uh, because I wouldn't like to extend here. Send me an email that I will send you some of these two tools. Great. Okay. Yes, we have another question from Beatrice. Beatrice asks, well, she says, I am completely speechless, but what kind of training can we get for continued enlightenment? Uh, uh, on executive coaching, well, yes. uh, there is the ICC Executive Coaching Certification Program. Uh, there will be, uh, I don't know where you are, Beatrice, but there will be one in, uh, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, in June. Uh, and if you are close or if you uh, are able to be there, it will be a pleasure to receive you. Uh, you can enter ICC website and check in the agenda. Uh, I don't know if there is another executive coaching this year outside Brazil, but you can check there. Okay, we will get Abigail. in touch with Patrice and you can also, you can always visit our website internationalcoachingcommunity.com and then you can visit the calendar in certifi under certifications you will see the training calendar with, with all the certifications available. Now Nina would like to know what would you do in a case of a very reluctant CEO? Well uh, it's a very good question because coaching depends much more on the coachee than on the coach. So it's very important that the coachee wants to achieve the target of coaching. If he doesn't or she doesn't want, it's very complicated. And this is a challenge because even a CEO, sometimes uh, when you have a CEO or the president of the company as a coachee, it doesn't mean that it was him who hired or who decided 
for the process, for the coaching. Uh, I had one uh, coachee here in Brazil. The, he was of, uh, the president of the company here in Brazil, and it was a British company. And uh, it was the headquarter that had decided that he, uh, it was necessary a coaching process for him. It wasn't him, and he didn't agree uh, with the questions that were put by the headquarters. So before starting the process, and I wouldn't start it um, if uh, we hadn't uh, um, developed with him a process and some meetings for him to decide if he would like to have this process or not. What uh, it could have represent to him. What would be the difference for his career and only when he totally agree it was when we started if you don't have this condition and you have a coachee that uh, doesn't agree with the goals of the company for him in the process or with the process it will be a waste of time and uh, it will not be possible to have a useful coaching process Joao, do we have time for another question? Yes, the, the last one. Okay. Patricia is asking how to achieve the company goals and also the coachee goals when the company is a coaching client. Sorry, when the company is what? The coaching client. So when the company is a client. Well, I, I don't know if I understood the, the question, uh, but I, I, uh, when the, the company is the coach uh, client, uh, I don't think that uh, how this will affect the, the situation. What I can say, if I understood the question, is that it's very important that the coach uh, can have a, a, a position of no judgment and, and, and another very important aspect of the coaching is that the coach cannot be affected by the outcome of the coaching. Uh, the coachee is totally responsible for the coaching process. So if uh, there is a overlap of situation where the coach, uh, it's impossible for the coach to have no opinion, no judgment about the coachee or even all the process, the, the other people that interferes in the coaching process or if he has uh, other interests different from the coaching process, uh, he's not able to go ahead with this process. Okay, uh, I don't know if this was what you asked. If it wasn't, please send me an email to, and that I will be glad to continue this talking, uh, talking about the subject with you. And uh, for all the others uh, who are interested in information about the executive coaching program here in Brazil, uh, send me an email that I will uh, forward this email to the person charge of this uh, program, to this certification programs that will contact you with more information. Uh, and also, as I said, it will be uh, very, very good. I will be very glad if I receive other comments or questions uh, from you. Uh, Abigail, I would like to thank you very much for your support in this webinar. Again, I would like uh, to thank ICC for in, uh, the invitation and all of you for your time, for your presence, for your rich questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope to be with you soon in another opportunity <clears throat> and I hope that you have liked this uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Gracias, Abigail. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you soon. Thank you so much, Joe. Bye-bye.